The panels that we made last time are back from the fab. Let's take a look and see how they turned out. Welcome back to Cloud42, I'm James. In the last video, I showed the process of panelizing PC boards for production, including surface mount assembly. If you haven't seen that video, you might wanna go check that out first. I have the panels back from the fab, and we're gonna take a look at those today, but before we do that, I wanted to update you on a couple of things. First, in that last video, I used the This Is Not Rocket Science Gerber Tools Panelizer to actually panelize the PC board, but since it doesn't support merging the BOM, I wrote my own tool to actually generate the BOM and the pick and place files. Well, on that last video, This Is Not Rocket Science left a comment saying that there is a future version of the panelizer coming that will merge the bomb, that it's not quite ready for, for prime time yet, but that there is a version coming that will do that. And I think that's great. Yeah, I went to the trouble of writing a tool to do it, and yeah, it's out there and you can use that today. But once that functionality is merged into the Gerber Panelizer, I think that's a much simpler one-stop shop solution for this, and I'm, I'm really glad to see it. And if there's anything I can do to help with that process, let me know and I'm happy to do testing. I'm happy to contribute if I can to the code. Um, I would really like to see that tool have that functionality because I think that would be a big benefit to the community. The second thing I wanted to mention is that in the last video, I said as clearly as I could that I have no affiliation with JLC PCB. They don't sponsor me, they don't give me money, um, they don't pay me to say nice things about them. And in fact, I said some things in the last video that weren't really all that nice about them. Well, as soon as that video went live, they contacted me and wanted to talk about a sponsorship deal for future videos. And as I said in the last video, that's great. I'm certainly willing to talk about that. They have a good service. I've been using it. I've been paying my own money for it. And if they want to sponsor me for it, we can talk. At this point, we're still in the talking phase. Nothing has happened, but since I mentioned it in the last video, in the spirit of full transparency, I thought it would only be fair to let you know that they contacted me about that. If that makes you feel feelings, put them down in the comments. You know, one of my coworkers said to me this week that while everyone knows the camera adds 10 pounds, what not everyone realizes is that it also subtracts 20 IQ points. So when he watches my videos, I just seem like a normal person. I think I'm gonna take that as a compliment, but just between you and me, even if you subtract 20 IQ points. As usual, I have already opened the package, but um, because I wanted to make sure this wasn't gonna end up being the world's shortest video. Uh, but uh, I put it back together just so you can see how it's packaged. Some people like to see this kind of thing. So the whole thing is shipped uh, DHL Express in an outer uh, poly bag. And then inside we have the uh, typical JLC PCB boxes. And inside that, uh, bubble wrap, and uh, they always seem to put in some kind of a token. This one is a little key ring, which is, uh, okay, it's kind of nice, little pink heart key ring. It's better than the button that I got in my first order. Um, I actually, they sent in the previous order a nice little etched combination key ring and fingernail clipper and bottle opener, which I have fingernails and I use keys, so maybe that's something I can use. So inside they, as usual, wrap the boards in this pink or red bubble wrap. Now this is not static shielding, I don't believe, but it is also, it, it doesn't build up a static charge. Oh, let's get rid of the box. And so they've uh, just rolled this with a couple of extra sheets of cardboard just so there aren't components facing the outside under one layer of bubble wrap. And then here are the panels. And the panels are just in here back to back. I ordered 10 and if we keep unrolling, they're, they're all in here in packages of two. Because there's only components on one side, they can put them in here back to back. So let's just pull out one of these panels and take a closer look at it. Now, of course, I've already had a closer look at it, but I'm going to show them to you now. Get rid of this. 
and I'm not going to throw that. Let me get you down here close with the macro lens. And you can see, just like we designed the panel, um, it's the 12 boards laid out. They did route the internal spaces between the boards. So a little bit worried about that when I saw the previews online because I really was not quite exactly sure if, um, if they were gonna get that right or not. And this would be a really big challenge to do anything useful with these if they didn't get the internal routing. But the internal routing is all there. And uh, you can see the mouse bites in between here. The uh, little tabs are there and they have little rows of drill holes next to them to make them easy to snap off. At least that's the theory. We'll break this apart here in a little bit. Looking at the component placement, I'm pretty happy. This is the one in the lower left corner. So this is the one that I would expect to be exactly right. And if we had any kind of error, then if we go all the way over to the one in the upper right corner, that's where I would expect the error to be. And looking at this closely, I think it looks pretty good. I don't see any placement errors. I don't see anything um, out of place here. Um, one of the things when I did hear from JLC PCB when they contacted me, they did confirm a couple of things that I was speculating about in the previous video. Um, you remember I mentioned that the part orientation seemed to be changing from order to order and so I was never quite sure, but that every order I'd ever gotten had it correct and I assumed that somebody was actually looking at every board before it went to production. And they confirmed that yes, that is true. They have a human that looks at every single board and they reorient components based on the silkscreen markings. So it is important to make sure that you have the silkscreen marked, like on this EEPROM chip, I've got a dot here for pin one, same thing with the voltage regulator, and you can't see it under the LEDs, but underneath the LEDs there's a little triangle as a part of the footprint in the silkscreen that shows the correct orientation of the LED. And so they tell me that they have somebody look at it, and as long as you have everything marked on the silk screen, they'll adjust the orientation if needed, and that there will be a future version of the website that will allow you at some point to adjust the orientation yourself if it's not correct. So, you know, they went to market with a minimum viable product and they have been slowly improving that over time. So I think this looks good. Let's break some of these apart and see how hard they are to break. Now I'll just start by trying to snap it by hand. Actually, that went pretty easy. That actually comes off pretty easy. Uh, it takes a little bit of force. You know, it's a little hard on the fingers. Pliers might be better. Let's see what's left behind here. Let's see if you can see that. There's just a tiniest little bit, it is kind of has some little sharp points on it. They stick out just a little bit, but it's, it's not bad. You're not gonna cut yourself on it. Um, I think if you were doing like a control panel PC board or a front panel PCB, that might not be ideal. You might be better off either having them fully routed or you know doing something where they're clipped in the corners so it ends up being a little facet. But that seems okay to me. I can pop off the other side here. And overall, I was concerned that the overall rigidity of the panel was not gonna be okay. But like on the edge here where I've got this, um, see if you can see that, it does flex, but it's fairly rigid. And the board's certainly rigid enough to handle. Clearly it was rigid enough for them to handle. Here on the other side where I've taken the strip off, it's a little bit more flexible, but it's still, still pretty good. Snap this other side off. Try to find the best way to do this. Probably using a tool would be better. I left a little bit more residue from the mouse bites there, but it, it looks looks okay. Okay, let's uh, snap them this way. And of course that leaves these little pieces that have to come off. Let me see if I can, let me start by throwing my pliers on the ground here. See how easily those come off. These pliers are smooth, so they're not gripping this very well. That wasn't too bad. There are tools for cutting these out that look kind of like a, a nibbler. 
uh, that have, uh, like imagine a little pneumatic device with a blade coming out the top of the nibbler and you just kind of put this in and hit a pedal and a little nibbler takes those, takes those mouse bites out. Um, those are yeah, on the order of 500 to a thousand dollars. So I haven't bothered, but yeah, these come apart really easily. The only thing here, I've gone this far without my static strap. The only thing here that's a little bit irritating is just coming back and breaking off these little tabs, but even that's not too bad. Now I will need to go back and run the cost analysis on this and try to understand if the extra time that I spend breaking these apart is worth the money that gets saved. But there are a couple of other advantages to um, panelizing like this. One of them is you have, like with JLC PCB, particularly with their prototyping service, they have a quantity limit. You can only order 40 quantity, or excuse me, 50 quantity right now. Used to be 100, now it's 50. Who knows what they'll do in the future. But um, if you're ordering individual boards, I mean, you can only order 50 at a time. But if you're doing panels of 12, you can order 50 of those and you get 600 individual boards. So it's, it's a lot more efficient that way, plus, in this case where I ordered 10 panels, which is 120 boards, they were manufactured in one to two days instead of five to six days, which is the normal quote if you do quantity 50. So there's an advantage there with speed. Okay, so the I was a little bit concerned because down here at the very bottom of the board, I do have a trace that comes very close to where this tab has to break off. So I was a little bit concerned about whether the stress on the board was gonna cause any issues. I am about three millimeters away from the nearest solder joint, but just looking at this, um, and looking at this under a little bit of magnification, I don't think there's an issue. I think this is fine. If I had been designing this with the idea of panelizing from the beginning, I might have moved those traces back a little bit from where I knew the tab was gonna be, but I don't think this is an issue. I think this looks fine. Let me move some things around and let's test some of these boards and see if they work. See if the panelization of the Gerbers worked, got all the copper in the right place, and if the components are all correct. I think they are, but let's give it a shot on the tester and just make sure. This is the same PC board tester that you saw me use in a previous video, but I have made a couple of changes. One is that since these PC boards now have these little mouse bites on the corners that stick out, those would interfere with the sides of this bracket. So I've gone in and added a half millimeter relief, a little pocket on all four of these locations where those mouse bites are gonna stick out so that the board will still fit cleanly on here without having to trim those exactly flush. Without doing that, here's the, uh, the previous 3D printed part. And without that, you know, it, they, you can force them in, but you know, actually, no, you can't. They don't, they don't really fit because these mouse bites hang up on the edges. So um, I just 3D printed a new version of this. I just went into the model, adjusted it, ran another print, reamed out the holes, and we're good to go. So now the boards fit cleanly into the tester. The other thing I did, which I talked about before, is I got a foot pedal. And this is just an industrial foot pedal with a, with a switch in it. It's actually very nice, big, heavy aluminum casing. Uh, I'll put a link to this in the video description if anybody is interested, but I just wired it up with a cable that has the female and male ends of the socket for the power. So I can just plug this into the tester and then plug the power into this. And then I have a convenient way with this pedal switch to just turn the tester on and off. Turn this so you can actually see the LEDs. So I'll just kick this down on the floor and use this for testing the PC boards. Because you remember I actually fried a microcontroller from getting partial connection on something at one point and I'm done with that so I went ahead and got the switch. So let's test one of these boards. Drop it in here, hit the switch, and all the lights are green and the Larson scanner is running. So that board's good. Now I haven't tested this before. You're seeing this the same time I am. Good. good. 
Well, that's 12 boards from this panel tested and 12 boards tested good. I, I kind of expected that because I was really careful with it and I looked over the Gerbers carefully and everything looked right to me and the component placement looked right and I know I did the math in the code and I think I did everything right, but you never really know until you spend your money and take your chance and see how it turns out. But this I am going to call a resounding success. Now, of course, I got nine more boards, nine more panels that I need to break out and get those boards tested. And I'm assuming that I'm gonna figure out a process, if not with this tool, with something else to get quicker at this. And I'll just have to see, based on how that goes, whether I think it's worth it to panelize or whether the additional time to break up the panels is worth the trade-off of the faster turnaround time at the fab, the ability to order more quantity, and just the overall efficiency of ordering the panels that way. Oh, I almost forgot. There is one other advantage of running these in panels instead of individual boards. You will remember that on previous boards, there was a batch number or an order number on the PCB that was added by the fab. And you can, with JLC PCB, specify where you want that to go. And about, in my experience, 50% of the time, they actually honor that. Um, but what that means is you will always have their part number on your board, either on the back or on the front or you know someplace, depending on, on where you decide to put it and if they honor that. But when I put this in a panel, I was able to have them place their order number on the side handling strip that snapped off and discarded. Same with their tooling holes. They put holes in the ends of the strips on the ends, and so I didn't end up with any of that on my board. So that allows me to have the board be exactly what I want. Of course, I have to compromise with the mouse bites unless I have some other way of trimming them out but it allows me to control everything on the silk screen and I don't have to put up with having their part number or their order number silk screened onto my boards. Which, you know, if you're doing a control panel or something, might be something important. That's all I have for today. I promised you that I would show the panels when they came back from the fab, and this is that. If you've been waiting for PC boards, I have more in stock now, and as soon as I get these panels broken up, I'll have 120 more. Uh, there's a link down in the video description if you're interested in that. If you're enjoying these videos, please give me a thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe to the channel and leave me a comment. I'd like to know what you think. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.